back to Alan's Grove Acres. It is a chilly Sunday morning and I think we're at about 58, 59 degrees, which is well below average for um, our area, especially this time of the year. So I thought it would be a perfect day to do some canning. We'll turn the stove on, kind of heat the house up. It'll feel great. Alrighty, so it has been raining all last night and into this morning. It's been a long, slow, really nice rain, uh, but we did get some sporadic winds. So we're going to check and see if we have any damage on our way to the shop where we're going to grab our tomatoes out of the fridge. All right, just doing a quick glance. The uh, spinach and the squash look good. Wasn't too worried about those. Sorry, pumpkin, not squash. Um, broccoli still looks pretty good. This one might be leaning a little bit, but that's okay. Oh, here we go. I was wondering. So this tomato plant has been absolutely humongous and it looks like it did definitely experience some changes. And the eggplants were leaning anyway, but not that much. So we may come back a little bit later and try to stake those up a bit, but Yeah, this broccoli plant looks a little rough, but I think, I think all in all, I think we can come back from all this. Let's go check the other tomatoes. So due to some prior wind damage, these have been pretty heavily staked with these really large pipes in the center, uh, which seems to have been a good choice. These are looking good. Um, I mean, they look like they did. I would say the same over here. I don't really see any change. They do look kind of tired, but they look like they did before. I don't think they sustained any damage last night. All right, as we walk to the shop, we'll kind of walk and talk together. Um, I did kind of want to check the tomatoes and see how they're looking, just because if you guys have been following, you know that it's been a really hard year for tomatoes for me. So the fact that we are even gonna have enough to can is what I would consider really good news. Fred's joining us. Um, so it has taken a while for me to collect enough of these tomatoes. I haven't canned any yet this year. Um, and normally I have most of my canning done. So between the cool weather and them just being off to a rough start and getting in the ground late, we really are behind schedule and I don't think we'll get as many as we normally do, but having any to can at all is good news, I would say. I have one almost full trug of tomatoes here. I have another partial trug in the house and then a Pyrex bowl full. So we'll see how much this gets us, but like I said, between the tomato worms and everything else, I'm happy to have anything to can. So let's head inside and get started. Alrighty, so I've got everything set up. I'm gonna kind of talk you through what's gonna happen and then we'll just get it done. Um, just kind of before we get started, I've got my mostly full trug, my partial trug, and then my Pyrex bowl full of tomatoes. These are mostly Amish paste and rollas. So they should be, with them both being pretty high quality paste tomatoes, this should make pretty good juice. We're just going to make juice today. Um, I prefer to just do juice and canned like chunks of tomatoes. That way I can season it however I want um, when I go to make things instead of making like pizza sauce and chili sauce and stuff like that. I prefer to just do juice and chunks and then go from there. Um, I do try to make fairly thick juice, so it's somewhere between um, sauce and juice. That's just kind of what I prefer and what usually works out for us. So I'm going to start off by washing these in the sink. I'm going to grab a big colander. From there, I'm going to cut them. I'm going to cut off the top in any kind of rough patches we might have. I'm going to leave the skins on and I'll show you why later. But so I will cut them into pieces, cut all the bad parts off, put them in the pot. From there I'm going to cook them down really good and then the next step after that is one of my favorites. So I'll start washing them and we'll just get her done.
tomatoes cut and in the pot I'm going to put the pot on the stove. I'm going to set it to about medium for now till some of the juices ooze out of the tomatoes because I don't want it to scorch on the bottom. Um, but I'm just going to kind of let it cook low and slow. I'm going to come back and stir it occasionally. In the meantime, while it's cooking, I'm going to clean up my current mess. I'm going to pull some jars out and um, get those prepped. All right, welcome back. It is just about two o'clock, which means these have been on the stove for about two and a half to three hours. They really cook down, they're getting really liquidy. That's exactly what we want. Now remember, I left the seeds and the skins on these because I said I had a trick. So this is my trick. Um, I have a KitchenAid mixer, and then I've got two attachments that work together to be put onto the KitchenAid, which acts kind of like a sieve. Um, so we're starting with the meat grinder, and so we're going to use some pieces of this. We're not going to use all of it, but then this one is called the fruit and vegetable strainer, works in conjunction with the meat grinder. So we'll use most of these pieces and some of these pieces. They'll work together. I'm going to assemble it really quick and then we'll kind of talk about how it works. Okay, so before I put the cover on, um, I just kind of want to show you how it's going to work. So the tomatoes are going to go in here and they're going to come through this tube and then there's kind of an auger that runs through here. So the power comes from the mixer, which turns the auger, and then the auger is going to push the juice through here. Now the seeds and the skins and things like that aren't going to be able to come through, so they're going to continue getting augered out through this hole. So we're going to put the cover on, and then we're going to put a bowl or a pitcher or something like that underneath here to catch the juice, and then a smaller bowl to catch all the scraps underneath here. Okay, so you can kind of see my setup. I've got the tomatoes on the left, the hot potted tomatoes with a ladle. I've got my stand mixer ready to turn on. I've got every uh, component of the sieve put together. I've decided to use a large pot. I'm not sure if it's gonna be quite big enough, but I think it's gonna be really close. I'm gonna use that to catch the juice. And then I've got a smaller bowl to catch my scraps. I'm not sure if that bowl will be big enough, but that's okay because it doesn't come out super fast and my compost is just out of sight, so I will be able to dump it in my compost as I'm working. So I'm going to try to find a good place to set you up. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see, but I will do my best.
messiest part. So I've got the tomato juice on the stove and I've got it set to between medium and medium high because we're just going to bring it up to a boil. In that time, I'm going to clean up this whole mess. I already have some jars in the dishwasher. I'm going to start that really quick on just a really hot, quick um, setting just to kind of make sure they're really good and clean and sterilized. I am still going to boil them on the stove. Um, you'll kind of see what that all looks like in a second. Um, but I'm really just going to kind of transition now, get everything prepped and ready for the next stage, which is getting them in the jars. All right, so before we get started, I just kind of wanted to show you what layout works for me. I feel like when you're a single person canning alone, well, like when you're one person canning by yourself, I should say, I feel like being organized and have everything set up beforehand is like a make or break. Um, I grew up learning to can with my mom, so I was used to there always being two people. And so the first time I did it by myself, it was extremely chaotic because I was used to a two person system. So if it's only one person in your system, this is how I like to do it. So I actually will boil my jars in my lids right before I put anything in them. Um, my jars are in the dishwasher right now, so they're going to come out very hot and clean, but this is just an extra precaution I take. So this is just heating up but this is just a pan of water and I'll have space for two jars and then two lids. If they are regular mouth, wide mouth, I can't usually fit quite as much in. And then I've got my tomato right here. And then this is my main work area. So I always use a towel. Um, oh, I guess I haven't pulled out a clean one. No, this was my clean one, sorry. So I'll always have a clean one. I tend to keep it on my shoulder when I'm working, but I'll use my towel, I'll pick up my jar, set it here, and then I will take my funnel, set it in my jar, so I've got my pretend jar here, um, and then I will ladle all of the juice that I need to in here, leaving between a half and a quarter inch headspace. I will use this handy dandy magnet tool um, and pick up my lid, Put it on top of my jar but before I do that I almost forgot um, this is a bowl with some vinegar in it I'll take my washcloth get it wet wipe the ring before I put the lid on so that that way there isn't anything getting in the way of that seal I have my lids and my rings right here for easy grab so when I take one jar out I automatically replace it when I take one lid out I automatically replace it so that that way they're heating in this pan while I'm filling this one. Uh, grab a lid, tighten it, and then I do not typically hot water bath my tomato products. Um, someone showed me a shortcut and that's exactly what it is. It's a shortcut. It is not a guarantee. I've had really good luck with it, especially being really careful about having sanitized hot jars, really hot tomato products. I actually just flip them upside down so that that hot liquid is in contact with that hot lid and leave them upside down for like between 10 and 20 minutes. Then I flip them back over and let them sit. And I think I've maybe had one jar out of the last four years that hasn't sealed doing it this way. Now, if I were doing this for sale, if I were doing it for anyone else, I absolutely would hot water bath them. 100% every single time because no, this is not something that I would say is a guarantee at all. This is a shortcut. Um, but that's where this towel comes in. As soon as I have my ring on my jar, I will take my towel off my shoulder again, turn it upside down onto this towel so it can rest for those 10 minutes. So that's kind of my setup. I am just about ready to get going. So I think I'll just set you up and let you watch. Um, yeah, let's get going.
So this is what we got. We got four quarts and a pint. Now this was not properly canned. I didn't think I was gonna get as much as I did. Um, so I just grabbed a pint jar that I knew was clean. It came out of the dishwasher. Um, and then this is just a plastic lid that I don't even have screwed on all the way. Um, I'll let it cool down and then I will put it in the fridge and use it within the next week. Actually, I might use it tonight. We'll see. But um, these are going to sit for about 15 minutes. I'll flip them back over. They will pop just like normal. Um, when they pop, we'll know that it worked properly. And from there, we are done. We just need to clean up. Alrighty, guys. This is where I'm going to leave you. We got our canning done. I'm just catching a little fresh air and sunshine before I go back in and finish our cleaning up. But thank you so much for being here today. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Please like and subscribe. And until I see you again, stay safe.